Hi, it's Cheryl with Caribou Country Lifestyle. I'm doing the second and third step of my wine kit that I had started a couple of weeks ago. So now I'm on the second and third step, which is the stabilizing and the degassing of the wine. So far, I have siphoned my wine into another carboy and I had to sterilize the carboy and then I rinse it out with hot water and I also sterilized this siphoning hose and I'm siphoning the wine out and in the bottom is just the sediment that's left over from the wine and those um, the oak chips that I also added to this wine that's left in the bottom with the sediment and I just want to get the wine into this carboy so we look down here we have my wine it has been transferred over into this carboy here I have a spoon and I've sterilized that as well So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding this sulfite sorbate. And what that does is it is going to help make sure that there is no more yeast growth in the wine. I just dropped one of my adding parts that I have to also add to this wine. So the potassium so sorbate is used to prevent oxidization and inhibit yeast growth. Then I'll also be adding the kieselsol, which I have been practicing on trying to say kieselsol, uh, because that just is not a word that I usually use on a regular basis. And what the kieselsol does is it removes any suspended particles in the wine which results in a clear and stable wine. So here I have the packet of the sulfate sorbate and I'm just going to open this up and it's just white crystals. How come this is so hard to open? I gotta grab my scissors. Okay. I'll just cut it off. If it doesn't want to come off easy, I'll cut it off. And then uh, I'll put the scissors back. And I'm just going to pour this into my wine. So now I'm going to add this potassium sorbate into the wine. I add the whole pouch into it and I've sterilized my spoon. And when I use the spoon, I'm actually using the handle end to stir this because the rounded other end with the spoon actually doesn't fit in this size of the top of the carboy. And then what I'm going to do is now I am going to stir this for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna stir it one way for about two minutes and then I'm going to change directions and stir it the other way for about two minutes and we have to do this for 10 minutes if you had a drill and you had a stirring bit to put on the drill it said that if you have the drill you would only have to let me read here four minutes you would only have to mix this at medium speed if you had a drill with a stirrer on it to be able to do that feature for you. I do not have that so I am just using it, doing the old fat fashion way and I am just stirring it with my spoon. After I'm done adding the potassium sorbate then I'm going to add in the kiesel salt but I have to mix this. Now I'm going to change directions. But I have to mix this for 10 minutes. And I keep an eye on that on my watch so I can uh, 
I'll know when the 10 minutes is up. It's been 10 minutes that I've been stirring, and now I'm going to add in the kiesel salt, and I'll have to use my scissors for this. This is a, a plastic pouch, so it's a lot harder to just rip the top off of. And I'm going to just pour this in. I don't have to stir this as long. I only have to just make sure that I give it a good stir. So I'll do a few turns one way. And then I'm going to stop and go the other way and turn that just to make sure that I give it a good mix. Okay, so that's step two is complete. I'm going to take this down because I have to clean this one out with all the sediment and that in the bottom. I'm going to put my spoon over into here and I will clean that out as well. I'm just going to make sure that and this all has to go in the garbage. I'm going to lift this up and put it back up here on my little heating pad. Okay, let's take a look. So I've done that. So I still have the chitazan that needs to be added. This one actually won't get added until tomorrow. But I still have to put an airlock on this carboy. And that just is going to keep it so that it's still doing its, going through its process. I'm just going to grab one of the airlocks. I have one here. So this is the airlock that I use. And I've been, this came with my kit that I had purchased. I got the fermenting pail, and then I got the carboy, I got the siphoning hose, I got the bung, that airlock that goes on the top of this carboy. And I think I got the spoon with it too. Like I've had this kit for a very long time and have used it many, many times. So I need to put some water into the top of this airlock. So I'm gonna add the water and then I'm going to clean out this other, um, clean out the sediment from this other fermenter. Okay, so what I've done is I've uh, rinsed this all out and I emptied all of the oat chips into this strainer so it doesn't go down my um, down the drain. I don't want that going into my septic system. So I'm just going to give this a final rinse. I took a cloth and wiped, cleaned out the inside. There was a bit of a residue line around the inside of my bucket. I'm just going to give this a final rinse with some hot water. Pour that out. I'm just going to let it drain right here into my washing machine. Another thing I was going to show you was they have these really nice labels that come with it and a lot of times I like to have toppers that will match the colors on the label so I have like a rust color here I have black got water on it I have black and these are just the shrink caps that go on the top of the tops of the wine bottles after you've filled them up with your wine and then you have the cork in it and then you can put uh, put your labels on and then the shrink caps are your last step that you would put on and I just put these on and I use a heat gun 
once I put the cap on, then I just use a heat gun and I turn it on and it actually activates that shrink cap to just hug and suck in the air and it just hugs right onto it, just like you would see in the liquor store if you're buying your wine. And then I also have an orange here as well. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to get some more of this rust color because I think that color would probably match the best with these labels. Okay, so I've put in my, um, oh, the sorbate into my wine now and I added the kiesel sol into it and then tomorrow I'm going to add this pouch of the cheetah san and after I add the pouch of cheetah san tomorrow then this will sit for six weeks before I do anything else after that I've got my airlock in here I've added the water up to the level that needed to be for they have a line there that gives you a guide as far as how much water to put into your airlock and really that's all there is to it so tomorrow I will add the cheetah sand and again I will just pour it in and then you just give it a quick stir with my spoon and then we'll wait for six weeks. At the end of the six weeks, then we will be, I will rack it off again into another carboy, which will then leave the sediment in the bottom of this carboy. I will rack it into a clean, sterilized carboy. And then two days later, I'm going to run it through a filter system. And I have, there's three filter pads that I put into through this filter system and the wine will run through that and it'll take out any sediment, any particles. And then what that does is that when you have your wine and you actually decide to open it, you won't have any sediment in the bottom of your bottles. Back in the day, uh, there used to be sediment in the bottom of your bottles on your homemade wine and there isn't any sediment in here and this is basically what we're doing with the degassing and then tomorrow when I add the cheetahs in, that's going to be clearing the wine so that after the six weeks then it'll be nice and clear and we'll be able to rack it off and then two days later I'll be able to filter it and then it'll be ready, ready to be putting into bottles with a red wine. This is not a wine that you would normally drink right away. It actually would be better to let it age in the bottles. Once I've filled up the bottles and put the corks in and the shrink caps on, I keep them upright in my crates for 24 to 48 hours and then you can have them on turned on their side why you don't turn them on their side right away is you want those corks to form into the bottle and after the 24 hours then you can have it on its side and you don't need to worry about any leakage of the wine coming out through the cork so that's all I have for you for today. Thanks for joining me and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.